You wrote to me once, listing the four chief virtues. Wisdom, justice, fortitude, and temperance. As I read the list, I knew I had none of them. But I have other virtues, Father. But none of my virtues won your list. Even then, it was as if you didn't want me for your son. Hi, I'm Joe. And I'm Tiana. And this is Next Door Villain. A podcast where we uncover the villains to discover their humanity. Hey, baddies. We have a very <coughs> special act. Gesundheit! <laughs> Sorry. God bless you. Anywho, we're here to... Do a wonderful activity to start us off today on our episode about an emperor, Commodus. So you know that in the movie Gladiator, Emperor Commodus, he does like this thumbs up, thumbs down kind of thing. Do you remember what the deal was with that? Yeah, thumbs up means the dude gets to live. Thumbs down means the dude has to die. Right, the losing gladiator. Uh, if it's thumbs down... The winning gladiator has to chop his head off or something. Um, and Emperor Commodus was the one who got to do a thumbs up and thumbs down. He had the power of life and death in his thumb. Pretty cool, huh? Today, Joe, you are the emperor and you get to decide between life and terrible punishment. I feel like the thumbs up and thumbs down is not going to display well over audio. Is that <laughs> a concern of yours? That's why you'll physically do the thumbs down and thumbs up, but you'll also say it so that our listeners can know what oh, you're okay. doing. <laughs> so this is what's going to happen. You're the emperor. I'm going to say an action that someone does. We'll go through a series of actions. You get to determine if the person doing that action, if you're okay with that action, meaning thumbs up, or if it's a thumbs down, uh, meaning that not only do you disapprove of that action, but they also deserve a terrible punishment for doing that action. Okay. So you get approve or disapprove. If you disapprove, they're going to be severely punished. And so after I say the action, you're just going to say thumbs up or thumbs down. Okay. Okay. Ready? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I guess. <laughs> okay. All right. A guy eating a bagel. Thumbs up or thumbs down? Thumbs up. Okay, great. You got off scot-free. I, okay. I thought they would be harder than this. Oh, you'll see. Okay. A guy eating meat. Thumbs up. Okay. Great. All you meat eaters out there, you're good to go. Bye. Well, Bye yeah, Emperor I mean, I'm a vegetarian, Joe. but that doesn't mean I'm going <laughs> to uh, terribly harm somebody who eats meat. Hey, I didn't know. I just wanted to find out. <laughs> All right. Someone... Not parking between the lines in a parking lot. Thumbs up or thumbs down? Thumbs up. Thumbs up! You approve of that action? No, I don't approve of it, but I don't want them to suffer a terrible harm for it. <laughs> oh, okay. A guy getting out of his car and yelling, Jiminy Crickets at you in a parking lot, returning to his car and then driving away. Thumbs, thumbs up. All right. All right. You approve of this action. No, I don't. I don't Great. approve of this action. I just. Well, thumbs up means approve. Yeah, but you told me the other option was that they would suffer terrible harm. Yeah. Yeah, there's no middle ground for the emperor. The emperor just says they either approve or they disapprove and they give you uh, a bad punishment. There's no neutrality when you're the emperor. Okay. <laughs> well, then I'm giving <laughs> them a thumbs up. Okay. Um, someone hating Taylor Swift. Thumbs up. 
What? I I love Taylor Swift, but also a lot of my friends don't. Oh yeah, so you don't want us to be punished. I don't I, I don't like this lack of nuance because I don't want to cause harm to people. Okay, this is the last one. Someone punching the guy who juggles alone. Uh th- thumbs up. Uh, I look, I'm a I'm a <laughs> benevolent emperor. I <laughs> like I mean, you got to do something like really wrong. I mean, I guess like punching someone is not great. That's probably the worst um, right thing that you presented me with but still these these really weren't that bad of things they were more like opinions That's true. Uh, for the most part okay do you want to make it a little harder no okay <laughs> all right yeah what did you think of that activity well uh, i thought it was kind of dumb because none of the questions were hard they all they, like it didn't seem like I had much of a choice. I mean, if it was simply approve or disapprove, yeah, then then it would be different. But you said approve or disapprove and cause terrible harm to people, which yeah. I did not want to happen. Yeah, well, I thought it would be nice. Just you're in the seat of the emperor. You're in the emperor's shoes. The emperor's there's new no neutrality. Shoes. The emperor's new shoes. Wrong episode, Joe. <laughs> You threw off the emperor's a groove. groove. Emperor's groove, that's what it is. <laughs> you threw off the emperor's groove. Yeah. It, well, Tiana, I, I would love die. to hear about Emperor Commodus from the film yes. Gladiator. Yeah. Released in the year 2000, directed by Ridley Scott, starring uh, Russell Crowe and Joaquin Phoenix and other people. Yeah, a few milestones. This is the second movie we've done that uh, was directed by Ridley Scott. Mm-hmm. And this is the second time we've covered a villain uh, that was played, played by, by Joaquin, Joaquin Phoenix. Phoenix. He's a very compelling villain. There's complexity in his eyes. I think that's what it is. Oh, yeah. He knows it. He really, he probably mm-hmm. went really method acting on that. He's yeah. Like, now I, I am I, an I, awful shitty emperor. I think we should mention just briefly that, that we don't talk about real people on this show. We only cover fictional villains. And we are okay with doing Komodos today because in the film Gladiator, he is very much a fictional character. He's sort of loosely inspired by the actual Komodos, who was an actual real person in the Roman Empire. But the similarities, well, there aren't, there, there are, there aren't a ton of similarities, to be honest. Right. Um, and we'll, we'll probably mention a few of those um, as we go through our yeah. description but we are specifically drawing from the character as we know him in the film Gladiator and not the actual Emperor Commodus. That is exactly right. Yeah, let's hear it, Tiana. Yeah, let's hear it. Let's actually do some histor- a little bit of historical digging just to kind of get a glimpse into this world. So it's Rome. It's approximately the year 180, 190-ish, somewhere around that time. Why do you think emperors like to have gladiator fights? I mean, I, 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 don't, I mean, I don't know. Uh, I'm, not yeah. a, I'm not a Roman <laughs> scholar by any means. Um, I, I'm sh- I believe there was probably, it was, I mean, it was a form of entertainment, right? It was a spectacle, but I think it was probably also the, maybe a way to like distract the people or motivate the people or um, to exert some sort of power over the people in, in some way, the commoners. Yeah, so in the real... Roman Empire, they were kind of like used for celebrations to celebrate like military victories. So you're like celebrating death with more death to celebrate visits of political figures. They used gladiator fights to celebrate birthdays. They also used it to commemorate death. So for example, Julius Caesar used gladiator fights to honor his father and daughter after they died. Wait, side note. It seems like, (laughs) again, not a scholar here. It seems like the term Caesar is used to describe anyone in in the emperor position in Roman times. So was Julius Caesar, was that his name or was he Julius and he was a Caesar? Or are they called Caesars because of Julius? And where does Caesar salads come in? I do not know the answers to those questions. But did you know that C-sections are called that, like cesarean sections, because Julius Caesar was, he was pulled out of the womb via C-section. 
makes sense. Cesarean. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, I don't I don't know. Those All, right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Anyways, if you're listening and, and you know the answer to that, let us know. Send us an email. We're dumb. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> Anyways, back to the I understood you were it as the Julius Caesar used gladiator fights to commemorate his father and daughter. The Julius Caesar, like the one, the honcho. Well, you you get what I'm saying though. Like they were like yeah. they were calling Commodus Caesar yeah. uh, in the film and referring to him that way. So now I'm just like, was it just a coincidence that Julius Caesar was named Julius Caesar or whatever? Anyway, let's but we'll we we'll move on. We don't know the answer. So, about the real Commodus, right? Like we mentioned earlier that it's the character Emperor Commodus in Gladiator was inspired by the real Emperor Commodus from the Roman Empire, but they're really not the same person. Yeah, the real Emperor Commodus was, from my understanding, much wilder and yes. more absurd than, than what we see in the film. The real Emperor Commodus from the real Roman Empire was considered very wild he didn't like doing his work as an emperor. He had a terrible work ethic. He would kill those he thought might turn against him, like just kind of left and right. He loved gladiator fights, and he joined in on the gladiator fights. He was just like, woohoo, and jumped in. He was like really into the gladiator thing for a lot of his life, and then he sort of ended up becoming emperor, and then sort of like was obsessed with himself and he like named all the days of the cal or named all the months of the calendar after himself and was made all these statues nice. of himself and then he was going to rename the city after himself to really into himself apparently he would also fight tigers elephants and hippos in the gladiator arena he also deemed himself hercules at one point of time like imagine like you wake up one morning and you're like i'm not myself i'm hercules he was eventually assassinated by his mistress and fitness coach, long story short. Yeah, and a lot of this information, too, is also like, a lot of this is not necessarily factual either. It's um, right. information that's been collected from a number of different sources that are, you know, some of them questionably reliable, depending on who wrote right. them. <laughs> uh, they were written so many years ago that it, it's hard to tell for sure. But I think when it comes down to it, it, it does seem like the real Komodos was a lot more interesting in sort of a weird, absurd way than the Commodus we get in the film Gladiator, who is uh, maybe a little bit more complex and nuanced and interesting in sort of a villain introspective way. They have one similarity. They're both very just intense. I don't know. <laughs> the character Commodus just enters like a room and it's just like, oh, intense emotions coming at me. Um... One thing about the character, Emperor Commodus, is that he does naughty things in like every single scene that he's in, in Gladiator. Every scene. I don't think there's one scene where he's not like just being a good person. Um, I'm going to disagree with that um, because oh, I yeah? actually, well, I literally just finished watching the film about, well, actually, I didn't even finish it. I still got like five minutes left uh, before we started recording this. Um, and I was sort of surprised at how little naughty things he did. Um, I, really? I thought overall he was um, fairly normal. I mean, he did, yeah, he did some some weird stuff, but yeah, weird overall, I, I guess he wasn't as bad as I thought he was going to be. He killed his dad. Yeah, he just did some weird stuff, man. Yeah, whatever. Uh, Let me tell you about how in every scene he he did naughty something naughty. Right off the bat, in one of the first scenes of the movie. He misses a battle that he's supposed to be in. And he comes trotting in after the battle is over. And he's like, oh, I'm sorry I was late. Who died? Which would totally be me during the battle. But he's just like, oh, hey, guys, I'm sorry. I couldn't find my keys. I don't know. <laughs> just Maybe he was legitimately late. Like something held him up. We don't know for sure. <laughs> um, but second, like they didn't need him. Like. Why should someone of his status be in a battle like this? They were clearly going to win at the end of the yeah. war. Like, why did he even need to show up at all? Honestly, he could have been off in his studies. I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't ding him for this. And I, I don't blame him too bad, too, because that would be me as well. Like, yeah. oh, I, I saw a frog. 
hopping war, along. War can't be everyone's thing. Like, not everyone can be war guy. Like, you know. So then after that, he finds out his dad, the current emperor, doesn't want Commodus to be emperor. And Commodus says a really awesome line, a really compelling line. Yeah, we're going to talk about that later. So put a pin in that. I'm okay, gonna talk, he did I'm, not. Yeah, I'm going to talk about that later. <laughs> Um, okay. So let's put a pin in that and come back to it, because I have a lot to say about it. About that line? Yes. Are we thinking about the same yes, line? Yes, we are. I promise you. <gasps> really? Yes. I 100%. That's pretty gutsy yeah. that you can read my mind. I, because it's a significant line. All right. Scra- <laughs> Commodus smothers his dad. He mothers? Into his chest. Smothers. <laughs> he smothers oh. his father with his chest when they're hugging. And he ultimately kills his father because, of course, um, he's upset that his dad wants to make Maximus the emperor and not him. Yes. And his father, did we mention his father is Marcus Aurelius, who in real life probably died of the plague, not not being murdered by his son. Um, And also in real life died at like 58. But this dude in the film was like, he looks like he was like 75, 80 years old. Yeah. So yeah, also Commodus kills him because he wants to be emperor, right? Yeah, well, it's his right. It is. It is his right. It is. I agree with that. But still, you know, he killed his dad. So that's a thing. So then enter Russell Crowe, a.k.a. Maximus, in the film. Commodus gives the order to murder Maximus's family out of envy that the emperor, his dad, was going to make Maximus the emperor. And Commodus was envious that his dad loved Maximus. Then Maximus becomes enslaved and then gets sold off to be a gladiator. Maximus reveals himself after winning a gladiator fight, and Commodus is mad because Maximus is alive as a gladiator. The people in the arena love Maximus because Maximus kills people in a cool way. That's why they like him a lot. He won the battle and killed people. Commodus gets envious of that. Maximus wants to get revenge on Commodus for killing his family. Commodus still wants to be loved by the people, so Commodus can't outright kill Maximus, because if he does, the people will definitely not like Commodus for doing that, so he tries to figure out a way to beat Maximus. Commodus also got ticked at his sister for plotting to kill him, and I think he wants to make his sister his wife, which is a big oof. Big naughty. Yeah, especially because she's also, she's clearly not interested two ways like it's his sister and she doesn't want him but he's got all the power over her and he's sort of asserting that power in an abusive way which is not good that's why he's the villain and then later on Commodus is like fine i'll fight maximus in the arena so that i can show rome i'm badass and awesome and worthy of love and show that maximus is not and then i'll kill maximus in the arena and he will be dead perfect he didn't say it exactly like that but you get the idea Before the fight, he stabs Maximus in the side. In the lung. So he cheats. Naughty number 15. Uh, He he stabs Maximus um, so that Maximus will hopefully be too weak to beat Commodus. Because remember, Commodus knows that Maximus is a better fighter than him. And they fight with swords in the arena in front of the crowd. Maximus still overtakes Commodus, even while he's wounded. And Commodus loses his sword and begs, others to give him one but they won't because they don't like him and hope Commodus dies so then Max and Commodus punch it out Commodus finds a dagger I forgot where he found it but he did and lunges it toward Max Max stops the dagger takes the dag takes the dagger that Commodus tried to slice him with and points it back at Commodus and kills him Maximus then dies from the stab wound Maximus and Commodus die the end Commodus is a bad guy. Like, I mean, if you review that, that was several naughty things. Yeah, no, I I agree that he's a bad guy. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, For sure. Yeah, Yeah, definitely the villain. Uh, Just not as villainous as I thought he was going to. I I guess I ended up empathizing with him a lot more than and, and a lot more easily than I thought I would when I revisited this film. Right. But how did how did you empathize with him? You're the one who's you're the one who believes he's so so naughty. Yeah, he's naughty, but I can understand why and how it got to that point. I thought Commodus was gonna be harder to analyze, but then when I watched the movie again, I was like, Oh, this is so obvious. He wants to be loved. That's where it all came 
down to. So let's take a look at some of his quotes, not any of the ones that you're thinking of, okay? Okay. He says, uh, actually, this one could be it. I feel like there's three different quotes we could be thinking of. Is it, Father, I would have butchered the whole world if you would only love no, me. No, the quote is the one you were going to say earlier. I, I promise okay. you. Okay, all right. I you're very confident. You. Okay. So yeah, I also really like this quote. Father, I would have butchered the whole world if you would only love me. He also says, I will give the people a vision of Rome and they will love me for it. When he sees Maximus is loved by the crowd, Commodus says, and now they, meaning the people, love Maximus for his mercy. So I can't just kill him or it makes me even more unmerciful, which implies he is scared that people will hate him and not love him if he does something they don't like, like kill Maximus just flippantly. Commodus also brought back gladiator gladiator fights to the Roman Empire so that people will love him. He also screams like, you will love me to his sister. And when his nephew is sleeping, he even says about his nephew, he sleeps so well because he is loved. The yeah. only thing on this guy's mind is love, love, love. I'm not loved. I need to be loved. I'm not loved. Love, love, love. And then he sees Maximus get it all, get all the love. And just that envy just churns in his soul and body and it spreads all over Rome. That was that was so apparent when when watching this film, which I I guess maybe when I was younger it wasn't obvious to me, but now as an adult it just it so clearly was that ev everything he's doing is motivated by just this deep inner strong powerful desire to like get affection from somebody. And like Maximus has so many things that Commodus doesn't. Like Maximus has like the standard courage you need for battle. He has fighting skill. He has good manners. Maximus sort of represents like everything that Commodus wants because Marcus Aurelius sort of sees Maximus as a son and as the son that he wants to take over and rule when he dies. I, I don't know that Commodus necessarily like really needed to be ruler, but that desire was that his father would want him to be a ruler and would see him and value him. Um, but his father saw and valued Maximus instead. Yeah. And I, that was, oh, I, I felt that so hard. Yeah. Because Maximus has all these things. But most of all, Maximus has love from Commodus's dad. Yeah. When Commodus doesn't. And that, I think, is the biggest thing. I also, I, I do think that Marcus Aurelius did love Commodus, um, but he didn't show it in a way that Commodus could see. Because I think there was like a line earlier in the film where he was talking to someone else about how he, like Commodus just wasn't right to be leader. Um, and I think sort of reading between the lines there, like he still loved his son. He just just knew that he wasn't the right guy for the job. And I feel like he could have done a better job of communicating that to Commodus. And maybe ahead of time, like maybe it, it seems like Commodus like felt like he was in line and was going to be offered that position. But maybe that should have been a conversation that they could have been having for years on what his future was going to look like and not just thrust at him at the last second, um, which felt like a betrayal to him. And imagine like being told or like kind of knowing that you were going to be emperor your entire life, like since you were probably like five, since you could comprehend what that meant. And then you make it to the age <laughs> that you will be emperor and your dad's like, nope, just kidding. Like, imagine being told you will have all these things, but then finding out that you will have none of it. Yeah. Not getting them is sort of a representation of how much someone cares about you. Yes. Which is maybe not true, but it is, I think, how it felt. Another thing, too, is I think Commodus wants to be loved by his father so badly. It could be because when he's loved by his father, he can then be seen as valuable. As humans, I think we tend to use love as a way to determine our value and worth as people. So like, if I'm not loved, then I'm not valuable. Or if I'm loved, then I'm valuable. 
he was hoping, I think Komaros was hoping that other people's love of him would give him permission to feel valuable and important because he wants to be important and loved and valuable like his father. When you're not taught that you don't need that permission from other people to feel valued and loved and, and worthy, then you keep searching for it. You keep hoping that you're loved so that you feel that you're worthy and valuable. Yeah, is that something that you have personal experience with? <laughs> of course, of course. I I think as all humans, we're susceptible to thinking like, oh, I'm only of value if I'm loved, if, if other people see me as such. Like Komodos could have found love and value within himself and looked at his luscious brown hair <laughs> and deep, intense eyes and and said, I'm already okay with myself as how I am, even when I'm not an emperor, even when I'm not a great warrior. I don't need my dad to tell me that. I don't need to kill him and become emperor and try to get all these commoners to like me in order for me to like myself. I love myself already. Like, people think that Commodus loves himself too much, but he doesn't love himself. Yeah. If he did, he wouldn't have done all this gladiator, killing father, become emperor kind of stuff in order to try and gain love and attention and to get permission to see himself as valuable. But he almost did. He was almost there. And I think, I think it's the perfect opportunity to bring up this quotation. Um, okay, let's when, see if it was the same one. Yeah. So it's, it's when Marcus Aurelius is going to Commodus to tell him that he's not going to be the next emperor. And Commodus responds and he says, quote, you wrote to me once listing the four chief virtues, wisdom, justice, fortitude, and temperance. As I read the list, I knew I had none of them. But I have other virtues, Father. Ambition, that can be a virtue when it drives us to excel. Resourcefulness. Courage, perhaps not on the battlefield, but there are many forms of courage. Devotion to my family and to you, but none of my virtues were on your list. Even then... It was as if you didn't want me for your son. And that line hit me so hard. <laughs> um, yeah. Because it, Commodus was like, these are the things you think are valuable. And you tried to thrust those upon me as, as things that you believed were important. And I had all these other things that were great. And they weren't the things that you thought of as great, but they were great in their own right. Um, and you never bothered to look and see that. And that hurt me is what he's saying. I like that line too. It also allowed me to think about like, well, that, yeah, that is interesting to ponder. Like he has a point there. Like there could be other virtues, other qualities that a person can have in order to be an emperor or to be something. It doesn't always have to be the same virtues that years and years of emperors have had. So I, I'm a twin, and so I think I, I sort of grew up with this direct comparison. I mean, you could almost think of, they aren't technically, but you could almost think of Commodus and Maximus as, as brothers. And in, in that arrangement, I see sort of myself as Commodus and my brother as Maximus, where my parents had sort of this like idea of what they wanted from us and i didn't fit into that mold as much as my brother did um and so i was always sort of like the outcast and i sort of felt like the things that i was good at weren't valued as much but in in my mind i was like they're just they're different things i don't want to be this particular type of person but i still have like a lot of good things going on for me and just because they're not the things that you were hoping for doesn't mean that they're not good and valuable um and i think that really affected me throughout my life so what were the qualities that you didn't have that you felt pressure to have <laughs> that, that, that's a, a great question i think that my family was looking for more sort of like familyness and like affection and sort of open love kind of stuff out of me that just wasn't something that came naturally or comfortable for me so i, I well i so think of it like i'm trying to it's hard to put into words but sort of like love languages you know where like some people 
are better at showing love through like words and some people are better at showing love through like actions and i was very much an actions child so like when i care about someone i do things for them um but i'm not so good at like telling them or expressing my feelings to them and i'm trying to be better at it with like my friends now because i recognize that some people want that and i can provide it um but it's not sort of natural for me my natural inclination is to do actions so to me that is a very valuable way to express my love but i don't know that other people always see it that way um and that can be frustrating i think that's sort of the same feeling that comodos is having is that look i'm i'm doing these things and they're great and i get that they're not the things that you want, that you want necessarily but why can't you see them yeah so that was one of the quotes that i was thinking of there's another one oh okay <laughs> during that same scene <laughs> very close um it's when he says I search the faces of the gods for ways to please you, to make you proud. And that just screams like this frustration that no matter what I do, you can't see the good parts of me. And someone see, watching that scene would probably say like, well, does Comodus have good parts? <laughs> yeah, like he said, he has, he has ambition, which can drive him to excel, resourcefulness, courage like not on the battlefield but courage in other ways devotion to his family he had all those things you know yes that's true he definitely has ambition because he was very ambitious when he smashed his father's face in his chest and yeah and him. Look, I, look i'm not i'm not <laughs> saying it was okay for him to murder right right his, his father or to try to get with his sister like these were all bad things but i do very much understand the path he went down to get there and how frustrating and difficult it was and he took i guess the path of um ambition um right it is true he has ambition <laughs> when i was confronted with sort of the same kind of feelings i like went inward and sort of like blocked myself off emotionally is the way i responded any better well te technically from a <laughs> Oh, uh, legal. <laughs> you didn't kill anyone. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't. I've, I've never murdered anybody, but I don't know. I'm not. I'm like really struggling because I do really feel for him and what he's feeling. But the murder was bad. But I understand what pushed him over the edge. He went to some really intense extremes to try and get what he wanted, which was love. And he thought that all of those things, becoming emperor, having power, trying to kill Maximus, he thought all of those things would bring him love. And, you know, villains are always so desperate for things that they don't have. And then I realized humans, humans in general, are really, are really desperate for things that they don't have. Yeah, it's just, it's kind of like if you fulfill people's sort of basic needs, then they do better all around. And then they're not clawing at what they don't have and taking all the means necessary to get it. Yeah. Almost every villain we're talking about, they were sort of deprived of something, whether it be money or love and affection, privilege in some way or another. It sucks that the answer is as simple as give people love and support and take care of them when they're young and much, much less people turn to villainy when that's the case. I've sort of already answered this myself, but I guess I'm curious for you if you have any virtues that you think maybe aren't recognized that you're proud of, but you wish other people could sort of see in you. So in this like really fast paced world that we live in today, um, I have a pretty good skill of patience. I have not met very many people who are patient. Sometimes people can look at my patients and think that I'm not encouraging people to speed up, or I'm not encouraging people to be efficient, or I'm not making people, you know, just get the ball on the road. Yeah, patience is a virtue, I think. Yeah. The Bible <laughs> says that or something, right? Bible, yes, yes. I, I think it is a valuable skill, and it's, it's one that I'm really bad at. 
Um. And, you know, I'm not surprised. And I, I don't know if it's be, like, because I haven't met very many people who are patient. And I think it might not be your fault or anyone else's fault. It could just be that we're in a society where time is money and things have to go quickly for things to function. And we've been programmed to understand time like that. But I've experienced too much of people being impatient with me to where I think to myself, I don't want anyone to ever feel like that. So I try really hard to be patient. Also, I'm more naturally patient than other people that I know. It just, it, it really hurts. Like if you're like putting groceries in the back of the car <laughs> and someone's like, just put it in just like this. Right. Or like, um, come on, like I'm putting the card away. Come on, shut the door. I'm putting the card away. Like I can only do one thing before I do another thing. Obviously, I'm like, I have some. Yeah, the equivalent for us <laughs> would be like, I'm like, all right, we're at 49 minutes. Why are we still talking? <laughs> right. And then I would say, well, if we're still talking, then I'll just cut it later, whatever. Um, <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah. Or if someone's trying to learn something. I think another that's another reason why I went into education too, right? Is that like, you have to be patient if you're going into education. And so like, okay, I, you know, that's a good skill that I have that I can apply to the education sector. Um, which I was like, I'm trying to be patient. But I, she I'm just trying keeps so talking. hard to not be like, all right. <laughs> Well, no, yeah, because I'm okay. always, it's... yeah, because I'm always the one who's like, all right, we got to move on to the next thing. Right. Um, <laughs> would you like to share a poem? Yes, I have a poem. It's called Emperor Commodus Goes to Pizza Ranch. And um, Pizza Ranch for people who don't live in the Midwest. Yeah, it's uh, good to explain I, it. I've lived on the West Coast, the East Coast, and the Midwest, and Minnesota, North Dakota is the only place I've seen Pizza Ranch. It's like an all-you-can-eat, but pizza? Yeah, all-you-can-eat buffet-style restaurant. Pizza, mostly. They do have some other things, like some salad and mashed potatoes. Um, it has a country-slash-cowboy-slash-western theme in it. So that's kind of the style. So it's very Midwestern, very country. Um, so just think about that. That's all you need to know. All right. Emperor Commodus goes to Pizza Ranch. With the red cloak waving in pepperoni air, Emperor Commodus from the movie Gladiator enters Pizza Ranch. He sees cowboy silhouettes on the walls. He asks, Did the cowboys ever dream of eating the lion's heart while the universe begs to hold them in the heavy dusk? Um, I don't know says the 15-year-old host. Lady at side table asks Emperor Commodus why he's dressed so fancy today. He says, I'm from Rome. I'm the emperor. She says, oh, I went there last year. Wonderful gelato. He walks to the buffet. Gallant, shimmering crown overlooks it all. Pepperoni pizza. Dripping cheese sticks. Smashed potatoes. Flat cheese pizza. Salad with... Thousand Island dressing. Emperor Commodus grabs the mashed potatoes in the buffet with both bare hands, seeping his fingers through the luscious yellow god. He clasps onto goodness that he can never become. Sometimes he thinks about goodness while suffocating beautiful things. This, this is very good, he says, staring, breathing on the potatoes. He puts it on his plate and sits down. Quiet wooden walls behind him. Lady who's been to Rome tells him, You should try the dessert pizza next. Everyone loves that. He takes the dessert pizza and it becomes a dream. One bite of the dessert pizza and the crumbles melting on the tongue could melt souls down to Hades' den. The warmth of the pizza says it could be your lover's armpit. The glaze is... Dreams. 
He stands up in the middle of the room, declares, I'll bring this treasured pizza back to the Roman Empire. They will love me for it. The manager says, please don't bring food out of the restaurant. He sits back down and says, but I'm not loved yet. It's okay. Me neither, says the 15-year-old host. Just eat it. It'll be okay. And Emperor Commodus sits there in the middle of Pizza Ranch. The end. Beautiful. Makes me miss Pizza Ranch, which I've not been to in years. Um, all right, we gotta we gotta rate um Emperor Commodus on a scale of one to five thumbs. One to five thumbs. How many thumbs do you give Emperor Commodus? Um, I actually give him four out of five because he was really bad. <laughs> I, I, look, again, like in the scale of and I'm, I'm ramping up to my review here in the scale of villains, when we think about what he does. So he kills his father. He tries to hook up with his sister. As far as being emperor goes, I feel like he was sort of on par with a lot of Roman emperors. So that's a good point. I don't point. think he did anything too dastardly as a leader you know other than wanting to be loved and sort of acting emotionally so i don't know like i okay i'm also gonna give him four thumbs but for wait four thumb ups i guess okay um uh, but it's because i think i found his motivation and his, his desire to be loved such a compelling force in why he became a villain four up thumbs <laughs> for emperor commodus and going back to that emperor point too like thinking about the roman empire and that that empire like spread itself and would conquer different regions and would have wars with people and kill lots right in order to spread the empire to be an emperor <laughs> you had to be pretty bad yeah even Marcus Aurelius, who's supposed to be like this, oh, this great deep thinker who didn't care about war uh, or didn't like war or whatever. He has that quote where he's like, well, I've been leader for 20 years and only four of them were peaceful. You're right. Emperor Commodus was on par with the villainy of the standard yeah. emperor in the Roman Empire. Like you had to be bad. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Bad and the conqueror and kind of aggressive kind of way and emperor commodus i think matched that yeah yeah actually so you know what i'm downgrading him to three thumbs because be, well i do find his 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 motivation incredibly compelling but i think he could have done more villainy he could have he really could have ramped up the villainy with the amount of power that he had but still very compelling backstory yes he was just a little too obsessed with the love part if he wasn't, he would have done much more damage. <laughs> so maybe it's a good thing he was compelled by the love. He could have used that frustration to do so much worse. Okay. He could have let it out mm. more. Yeah. Yes, this is all very intricate. Anywho. Yes. Uh, so that uh, that's our episode. Thank you all for listening. I'm Joe Anderson here with Tiana Hennings. Uh, we have a Patreon now, if you haven't heard, patreon.com slash nextdoorvillain. There's a number of different levels you can support us, starting at as little as $3 a month to be able to vote on one of the villains we cover every month. And in fact, the next villain we're going to do was voted on by our Patreons. Um, and you could be a part of that for just $3 a mm -hmm. month. So nextdoorvillain.com. No, wait, no. Patreon.com slash nextdoorvillain. Yes. Yeah. Thanks for listening. Yeah, thanks.